Hello and welcome to Talking with Tundra. Today we're going to explore some key titles from our Fall 21 list. We have a diverse collection of fiction, nonfiction, graphic novels, fantasy, new voices, and established stars. So settle in and let's get talking. My name is Vicki Van Sickle and I am the Director of Marketing and Publicity for the Young Readers Program at Tundra, which also includes Puffin Canada and Penguin Teen Canada. Our books feature creators from all over the world and are sold across North America. You can order our books from your Random House Children's Book Rep or Wholesaler of Choice. I'm going to go off video now so you can enjoy the art in our selections. Our first topic is witches and ghosts and giants, oh my. We love magical beings at Tundra and have created a niche for ourselves as a publisher of adorable, unique Halloween fair. First up, Little Witch Hazel, A Year in the Forest by Ezra Jack Keats winner, Phoebe Wall. Little Witch Hazel is a tiny witch who lives in the forest, helping creatures big and small. She's a midwife, an intrepid explorer, a hard worker, and a kind friend. In this four season volume, Little Witch Hazel rescues an orphaned egg, goes sailing on a raft, solves the mystery of a haunted stump, and makes house calls to fellow forest dwellers. Little Witch Hazel is the cottage core book of my dreams, a beautiful ode to nature, friendship, and the answer to the question, what should I get the hip witchy friend of mine? Phoebe Wall's love of nature and distinctive vibrant style brings to mind an American toast Jansen, and this 96 page collection is a book earthy families will reach for all year long. Our next witchy title is for middle grade readers. Welcome to an alternate Victorian London, where a sentence of witchcraft comes with dire consequences, and all children who've reached the age of 13 are tested to ensure they have no witch blood. Emma must attempt to stamp out her secret before her own test comes. But the more she researches, the more she begins to suspect that her radically anti-witch aunt and mother are hiding the truth about their sister, her Aunt Lenore, who disappeared under mysterious circumstances years ago. When the day of the test comes, Emma's results set her on a course to challenge everything she's ever been taught about magic. Escape to Witch City is a great adventure story that reminds me a bit of HBO's latest hit, The Nevers. Now moving on from witches to ghosts. Karis Cotter is the queen of the ghost story and her latest middle grade novel is sure to thrill middle grade readers. Alice's world is falling apart. Her parents are getting a divorce and they've canceled their yearly cottage trip, the one thing that gets Alice through the school year. Instead, Alice and her mom are heading to some small town where Alice's mom will be a live-in nurse to a rich elderly lady. The house is huge, imposing, and spooky. Things start to get weird when Alice finds a dollhouse in the attic that's an exact replica of the house she's living in. Then she wakes up to find a girl asleep next to her in her bed a girl who looks a lot like one of the dolls from the dollhouse. When the dollhouse starts to change when Alice isn't looking, she knows she has to solve the mystery. Who are the girls in the dollhouse? What happened to them? And what is their connection to the mysterious woman who owns the house? This is a great read for fans of doll bones and small spaces. Next, we have the second installment in a hilarious graphic novel series for kids aged six to 10. In Simon and Chester Super Detectives, readers were introduced to best friends and super sleuths Simon and Chester, a ghost and a kid who team up to solve mysteries. This next book in the series finds them at the spookiest of places, a sleepover. Kale's background in animation provides a great cinematic feel to these books, and his ear for dialogue and puns will win over fans of Narwhal and Jelly and Bad Guys. Plus, we think they'll get a real kick out of Simon's booty pictured here on the slide. Stay tuned for more in the series. Next up, we have a whimsical picture book and another dollhouse in Gemma and the Giant Girl. A doll in an old forgotten dollhouse, Gemma wonders if she will ever grow up, but her parents tell her she will always be their little girl until one day the dollhouse is opened by a giant and Gemma's whole life changes. With the soft palette and its poignant themes of what it feels like to be small in a big world, 
Gemma and the Giant Girl is a story that evokes children's classics, such as The Borrowers and Mary and the Mouse, The Mouse and Mary. Our next topic is brain candy, featuring picture books that ask big questions, invite young minds to take a big stretch and look at the world in new ways. Our first title is a highly anticipated picture book from beloved award-winning author illustrator, Julie Morstad. One of the statements I'd heard the most frequently during the pandemic is what is time? It seems like our perceptions of time patience, growth, and everything that comes along with these topics has been thrown for a loop. So what is time? Time is a seed waiting to grow, a flower blooming, a sunbeam moving across a room. Time is slow like a spider spinning her web or fast like a wave at the beach. Time is a wiggly tooth or waiting for the school bell to ring or reading a story or three. In this magical meditation on the nature of time, Julie Morstad shines a joyful light on a difficult to grasp concept for young readers and reminds older readers to see the wonders of our world, including children themselves, through the lens of time. Next up, we have Thingamabob. In the beginning, the universe was one great big thing. Then that thing exploded into gobs and gobs of Thingamabobs. All of the Thingamabobs had a purpose, all except for one small, shapeless, thingamabob. No one knew what it was for. It wasn't this or that. It wasn't here or there. What is the use of this thingamabob? Thingamabob is a story that explores identity, loneliness, and finding one's place in the world, all while promoting empathy and kindness. Mariana Capo, creator of Petra and Ray, has created another unique, adorable character that kids will relate to. Like Carson Ellis or John Clausen, she has a distinctive style that appeals to both adults and children. Our next picture book is about a caterpillar who decides to throw himself a party. It feels very timely, especially for those of us who are celebrating our second pandemic birthdays. Caterpillar is so bored, but everyone knows the best cure for boredom, an unforgettable party. He has everything he needs, apple juice, confetti, decorations, party hats, and star stickers to stick on your face. Everything is perfect except for one missing ingredient, friends. Unfortunately, none of Caterpillar's friends are available, so he comes up with an ingenious solution. Using a marker, he creates six new friends on himself. They dance, they play, they put on costumes, and even eat seven feet of pizza. It's a marvelous time. This offbeat story celebrates imaginative play, self-care, and fully embraces its weirdness. Depending on where you are in the world, we know back to school may feel a little different this fall. Anticipation and social anxiety could be at an all time high. So we have three new titles to help erase those back to school jitters. First, we have a new book in the New York Times best-selling Narwhal and Deli graphic novel series. In School of Awesomeness, the two best friends volunteer as substitute teachers. The first subject is Wafflematics. Next up is a super fun science scavenger hunt, followed by a game of tag, you're awesome at recess. Narwhal's teaching methods may be unconventional, but with Jelly's help, the two teach and learn with their trademark positivity and humor. Beloved category buster and leader Narwhal and Jelly have won awards, accolades, and honors, too many to name here. We think this book is the ideal back to school book, celebrating collaboration, trying new things, and above all, kindness. Think school of rock, but with sea puns. Our second school readiness title is the third book in our chapter book series inspired by Anne of Green Gables. So far, we've met Marilla and Matthew Cuthbert, kindred spirit Diana Berry, and now readers will be introduced to one of the most famous Anne characters, Gilbert Blythe. Anne loves Autumn and Avonlea, and she's been enjoying her first three weeks of school until Gilbert Blythe joins the class and immediately rubs Anne the wrong way. This lovingly adapted chapter book includes two of the most famous Anne moments, the carrots 
Shift Incident and the dramatic Lady of Shalott Pond Rescue. Featuring gorgeous autumnal art, this is the perfect gift for Anne fans and children new to the beloved series. Next up, we have a new graphic novel chapter book series, perfect for kids moving on from picture books and for fans of Bad Guys, Narwhal and Jelly, and Investigators. Weenie the Wiener Dog loves his human Bob. He loves his guinea pig friend Beans and his cat friend Frank. He loves naps, adventures, and sharing. In fact, Winnie loves pretty much everything, but the thing Winnie loves and desires more than anything else in the world is meatloaf, and he'll do anything to get it. Maureen Fergus is a talented author who's written books in various age ranges and genres. The common denominator, Maureen is very, very funny. Her silly characters and witty dialogue are perfectly matched with Alexandra Bai's bright illustrations. Kids will laugh out loud at the animal's dynamic facial expressions. This gentle graphic novel will leave emerging readers hungry for more. And for our final category today, I'd like to highlight some must read own voices stories. Debut author Sharan J. Zhao had an incredible response when they announced their book deal online. Maybe not so surprising when you consider their 64,000 Twitter followers and the combined 2.2 million YouTube views across five videos that explore Asian cultural inspirations in pop culture. Their own voices debut novel, Iron Widow, is an adrenaline packed genre bending read with LGBTQ plus content. In Xiao's Reimagine China, the boys dream of pairing up with girls to pilot chrysalises giant transforming robots that can battle the aliens that lurk beyond the Great Wall of China. It doesn't matter that the girls die from the mental strain. But when 18-year-old Zetian offers herself up as a concubine pilot, it's to assassinate the ace male pilot responsible for her sister's death. But when she gets her vengeance, it becomes clear that she is an iron widow, a rare kind of female pilot who can sacrifice males to power up chrysalises instead and Zetian vows to be their nightmare to force society to stop failing its women and girls. The author describes this book as 400 pages of female rage. Iron Widow is our top requested title on NetGalley and is racking up the rave reviews on Goodreads and from authors like Julie C. Dow, who calls Iron Widow brutal, bloodthirsty, and full of rage. Zetian's fight to shatter patriarchal definitions of power makes for a truly thrilling read. Be sure to visit our Swagapalooza page for a chance to win a galley of Iron Widow plus two other YA titles. Our next own voices title is Walking in Two Worlds from Indigenous performer, writer, and politician Wab Kinu. In the real world, Bugs is a shy and self-conscious Indigenous teen who faces the stresses of teenage life on the res. But in the virtual world, her alter ego is not just confident, but dominant in a massive multiplayer video game universe. Fang is a teen boy who's been sent from China to live with his aunt, a doctor on the res, after his online activity suggests he may be developing extremist sympathies. Meeting each other in real life, as well as in the virtual world, Bugs and Fang immediately relate to each other as outsiders and avid gamers but betrayal threatens everything Bugs has built in the virtual world, and she must learn to reconcile the parallel aspects of her life, the traditional and the mainstream, the East and the West, the real and the virtual. Walking in Two Worlds weaves together many themes and issues facing teens today, including an increasingly virtual space, gaming, cultural and societal pressures, and more. Wab Kinu has dedicated his life to celebrating and amplifying indigenous culture, and this novel decolonizes and challenges the YA fantasy novel, weaving in needed perspectives and voices. Be sure to visit our Swaga Palooza page to enter to win a galley of Walking in Two Worlds, plus two other YA titles. Our final title is the second book in the Misawa saga, a middle grade fantasy series written by award-winning Cree author, David A. Robertson. The Great Bear picks up after the events of The Barren Grounds. Back at home after their first adventure in the barren grounds, Eli and Morgan each struggle with personal issues. Eli is being bullied at school and tries to hide it from Morgan, while Morgan has to make an important decision about her birth mother. They turn to the place where they know they can learn the most and make the journey to Missawa to visit their animal friends. 
This time, they travel back in time and meet a young fisher that might just be their long lost friend. But they discover that the village is once again in peril and they must dig deep within themselves to find the strength to protect their beloved friends. Can they carry the strength back home to face their own challenges? The first book in this series received a starred review from Kirkus, is currently a 2021 World Read Aloud and a Texas Lone Star selection, and was recommended by booksellers on NPR's Code Switch. This Narnia-inspired fantasy explores Indigenous stories about constellations and also weaves in contemporary issues facing Indigenous kids. Dave is a seasoned presenter, and you can also catch him talking about this series in a book commercial, a series of videos we've created for our middle grade titles found on the Chandra Books YouTube page. You can find out more about these and all of our titles by visiting tunderbooks.com or chatting with us on social. Drop by our booth for more sneak peeks, downloadable resources, and more. Thank you for joining us at ALA Annual, and we hope you have a great day.